Hey folks, it is December 16, Wednesday hump day, and this is the Daily Word in the Crisis, and this is a rant, so you're going to have to put up with me or shut this off before I get going. Well, I don't know about all of you, but I'm burned out on the political situation. It's not just that I'm burned out, it's that my pastoral and prophetic alarm bells are going off so loudly that I can't ignore them. People on both sides of the political divide have been fighting over the outcome of the election as if the very kingdom of God depends on it. But look back at the history of God's people over the centuries. Pharaoh couldn't stand in the way of God's purposes for the Hebrews. Centuries later, Nebuchadnezzar might have thought he'd overcome the Lord when he conquered Israel and took the people into the Babylonian exile, but he was wrong. King Herod failed at killing the baby Jesus. The Sanhedrin of the Jews couldn't stop the spread of the gospel or shut down the signs and wonders. Hostile Roman governments tried to suppress the church, but they found themselves only throwing gasoline on the fire of Holy Spirit passion and the growth of the body of Christ. Well, concerning the election and its outcome, I've said and prophesied what I've said and prophesied. I want to say that again. I've said and prophesied what I've said and prophesied, and I'm not taking anything back at this point unless I'm finally and decisively proven wrong on January 20. So stay tuned. I won't say much more about it until then. That being said, what I have felt in recent weeks is the heart of the Lord crying out for the condition of the church, his bride. We have too much, listen to me, we have too much allowed ourselves to become bitterly divided over the disposition of an earthly kingdom at the expense of the heavenly one. Now, I'm an American, and as such, I care very deeply what happens to my country. I've been as angry as anyone else over this election. But hear me, my nation, my people, is the body of Christ that transcends every nationality and every people group. 1 Peter 2.9, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who's called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. <clears throat> so first, we've been chosen. Second, we've been made royalty. Third, we are built for ministry to God. And finally, we so, you know, we've, We've been called, commanded, and commissioned to proclaim the wonders and the goodness of Jesus to the nations. That's our primary purpose in life. When political issues begin to overshadow that, something is wrong. When the world hears more from us about a political candidate or a president than about Jesus, something is wrong. When one of us posts a comment on Facebook about the political situation and other believers react with bitterness and anger, something is very wrong. When churches forget the authority that Jesus has imparted to us to conquer disease, and when he has granted us authority to speak in his name into the nations, to make disciples of all nations, and we just roll over and close our places of worship for months on end in response to fear something is wrong. Matthew 10, start at verse 1. Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority, gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out, and to heal every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. Mark 16, 17. These signs will accompany those who have believed. <clears throat> Excuse me. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. Verse 18. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Now, when we don't believe these things, and if we don't move in them on a regular basis, I want to submit to you that something is wrong and has been wrong for a very long time. So mock me if you will, but this is God's word. And if we're going to have an impact in this world, and if we're going to rule and reign with Jesus, we're going to have to wake up and take a hard look at why and how we've missed it, and then repent for what we've missed, what we've lost, and what we've simply surrendered. Hebrews 10, start at verse 23, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Verse 24, And let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds, 
And finally, verse 25, not forsaking our own assembling together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Well, first, God's commands supersede the commands and governments of men. In Acts 5, the disciples defied the Jewish governing authorities' orders to stop preaching by saying in Acts 5.29, we must obey God rather than men. But this pandemic hit with all of its devastating <coughs> excuse me, economic impact, and people began to need connection. They began to need relationship. They began to need encouragement, and the, they began to need the presence of God more than ever as governments enforced isolation from one another. Government edicts were handed down forbidding church gatherings. Media fed us a daily diet of fear and distortions. And the vast majority of the body of Christ just rolled over, surrendered whatever authority we still had, and closed up. Yes, a remnant has stood up to it. And a remnant has awakened, embraced the fire of purification, and fallen on their knees in repentance with a renewed burning passion for the Lord. Where comfort and complacency once ruled, there's a growing hunger for real substance, for worship that really breaks through into the presence of God, for preaching that goes to the depths to connect people with Jesus. It's a groundswell and it's growing. But at the same time, there's this imbalance and this faulty focus that so troubles me. Turmoil and division over the election together with paralyzing fear of the virus. Isn't it time, listen, isn't it time that we chose to truly believe and walk in the power we've been given? Isn't it time to seek the Lord for whatever stands in the way of fully entering into his promises and impartations so clearly laid out for us in Scripture? Isn't it time we stopped dividing over worldly issues of human government and learned the depth of what the Apostle wrote in Ephesians 4, start at verse 1? Therefore I, the prisoner of the Lord, implore you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, showing tolerance for one another in love, being diligent to preserve the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Now focus on verse 4. There is one body and one Spirit, just as also you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. Well, seven is the symbolic number for fullness and completion in Scripture. And there are seven onenesses referenced here. When will we actually get it? So do you think perhaps we ought to take the things that have divided those of us who genuinely love the Lord and nail them to the cross? Do you think maybe we ought to stop accusing one another of heresy all the time? And when did some of us get the idea that the kingdom, the kingdom of God can somehow be advanced by calling someone whose eschatology differs from yours a false teacher? Do you think maybe it, <clears throat> maybe it might do more to establish reliable prophetic ministry in the church if we stopped hurling accusations of false prophet at those who miss it? Maybe it would help if we gave a serious listen to Galatians 6.1. Brethren, brethren, if anyone is caught in any trespass, you who are spiritual... Restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, each one looking to yourself so that you too may not, will not be tempted. Well, maybe if we could learn some of this more deeply, the world might actually listen to us. So my heart burns for God's people. I'll always be, I will always be a political conservative, and I'll never vote for a party whose platform violates scriptural moral principles. But when the world sees me or you or us more in the light of our political preferences than in the light of what we reveal of the Lord Jesus Christ through our love, our ministry, and the peace we bring with us, then something is wrong and it's time for a deep heart examination. I'm not saying that those of us called to fight the political battles should abandon that work. Be faithful to what God has called you to do. But at the same time, plead for mercy from heaven to do it in a way that doesn't feed hatred. Do it in a way that shows the world the goodness of our Lord. Jesus said in John um, 12, 32, he said, And I if I, am lifted, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. 
So the question is, do we live in such a way that Jesus Christ and him crucified is presented to the world in a way that draws all people to him? Well, that's enough said. That's the end of the rant for today. God bless you.